Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we have a hydraulics hydrology problem. Uh, and in particular, we're going to be talking about a Venturi problem. Uh, so here's what the question says. A nozzle of an aerator contracts from four inches to a half inch in diameter. Uh, if 350 gallons per minute travel through the nozzle, which of the following closely resembles the pressure before the end of the nozzle? Uh, and then it gives us point A there. Uh, use 1.0 as CV. And then we see our four options in pounds per square inch. Um, okay, so the first step to this guy is recognizing that this is a Venturi problem. So you can find uh, the formula for the Venturi problem in the PE manual on page 318 and also in the FE manual on page 196. So whenever you look on that, you will find a formula that looks a little bit like this. The flow rate is equal to CV times your area 2 uh, over the square root of 1 minus area 2 over area 1. And this guy is squared. And then you take the square root of that. And then you multiply all that by the square root of 2G. And we multiply 2G by... Uh, the pressure head uh, plus our, our uh, elevation at point one and then we subtract the pressure head at point two and we subtract the elevation at point two so that is your Venturi problem it looks kind of intimidating but it's not um, we have basically everything we need to know uh, we can solve for the area two we can solve for the area one uh, we're obviously looking for our pressure in point one. So this is what we are searching for. Um, and we don't have any elevation, so that's gonna end up being zero, and point B is open to the atmosphere. Um, so that's also zero the pressure at point B. So a lot of this stuff cancels out. And so by doing that, let's, let's go ahead and simplify this out. Uh, well, first, for our Q, for our flow rate, it gives us 350 gallons per minute. And so that looks like this, 350 uh, gallons per minute is flowing through this guy. And it flows from A to B. So we need to convert that into units that we can work with. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be cubic feet per second um, because we know that gravity has units of seconds. Um, and then we see our answers are an inch, so we know we're going to have to use cubic feet as well. Um, so this is how we do it. I'm going to use my train tracks method, so 350 gallons per minute. And this just helps me with conversions, makes it easier for me. Uh, we know that one minute is 60 seconds. So here we go, 60 seconds. Um, and then we can convert our 350 gallons to cubic feet. So there are 7.481 gallons. For every cubic feet okay. and so if you multiply that stuff out um, you'll end up with 0 0.78 cubic feet per second okay so now let's uh, let's simplify our formula out let's plug and chug some stuff in so you end up with 0 0.78 cubic feet per second CFS is equal to our CV. So in this case, it says use 1.0, so 1.0, uh, times our area two. Well, this is something that we're gonna have to solve for. Uh, so your area two, you're just gonna do pi d squared over four. Um, so area one, we're gonna have to solve for that anyways. And then we have area two. So area one is point A. We're gonna go ahead and call this one equal to point one, and this one's gonna be equal to point two. Um, so we're going to go pi times D, which at point one is going to be four inches. And we need to convert that over to feet. So divide that by 12 squared. And then we're going to need to put it over uh, four, pi D squared over four. So for area two, we're going to do 0 0.5 inches over 12 and square it and then divide it by four. So that's where that guy comes from. Area one ends up being... Uh, 0 0.087 0 0.087 square foot 
and area two ends up being 0 0.00136, and that is square feet. So now we can plug and chug for real. So I'm gonna erase my old equation here and I'm gonna rewrite, now that we have all of our unknowns, uh, I'm gonna scroll down and we're gonna rewrite this guy. So uh, rewriting 0 0.78 cubic feet per second is equal to our CV value. So now this one's for real. Uh, our A2 is 0 0.00136, that is square feet. Write your units out because it helps helps you at the end. A square root of one minus, and then we see our A2. So our A2 is 0 0.00136. That is square feet. Uh, we're going to put that over A1, which is 0 0.087 square feet. And then we need to square that and square root all of that. Okay. And so now we need to multiply that by the square root of 2G. And we know that gravity in US units is 32.2 feet per second squared. Good number to memorize. Um, and then we need to multiply this by our pressure at point one. Doesn't give us a fluid in this one, so we need to assume water, so 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, ECF. And then we need to add our elevation, which is zero. Uh, we don't have any differential in elevation. It doesn't give that to us. Uh, and then our pressure at point two is open to the atmosphere, so that one's zero. And then our elevation at point two is zero as well. And we need to square root all of that. Okay, so cleaning up a little bit, I'm gonna scroll down here. Cleaning up a little bit, if you, um, if you simplify here, you should end up with 573.46, and that is feet per second, so that's your velocity through that, that is equal to the square root of two times 32.2 feet per second squared. And then we need to multiply that by the P1 over 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. We need to square root all of that. So if you square both sides, you should end up with 328855.61. And that's going to be feet squared per second squared. So this is where you carry out your units to really double check that you're doing your math right. And this is going to be equal to uh, that 2 times 32.2 feet per second squared. And we multiply that by the P1 over 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So if we simplify this out just a little bit, solve for P1, you should end up with this monstrosity of a number, 318642. Point four eight, and this is pounds per square foot. So foot squared is equal to P1, so PSF. Okay, so we almost have it in the units that we want. However, we do notice that our units are in PSI in the answer bank. Uh, so we need to convert this over to PSI, and the way that you do that is by dividing by 144. So if you divide this guy by 144, uh, you should end up with 2212.80 PSI. So now, if here's a fun fact for you, if you plugged in for your area, for your area two, if you uh, said that this guy is 0 0.0014, okay, if you just rounded that, you will end up with a pretty darn close number. It's still the correct number in this case. So when you have A2 equal to 0 0.0014, uh, so in other words, if you round that, your answer will be pretty close, but it'll be off by just a little bit. Uh, you will end up with 2088.12. And so in this case, in our answer bank, let's see, we're looking for 2200 or 2100, and it looks like they have 2100. And so in this case, the, uh, the question says, uh, let's see which of the following closely resembles so this is what they'll do just to cover their bases um, And basically have the correct answer regardless of how you round 
Um, so I hope this video helps and we'll catch you next time.